In this video, Axiom Examine User Interface and Menu Items, we'll take a look at the different menu options available in Axiom Examine for both Magnet Axiom and Axiom Cyber. We'll also review the settings available in Axiom Examine, along with a variety of the post processing options, media categorization capabilities, and Magnet AI options. Additionally, we'll take a further look at some of the views available within the Artifact Explorer that were first introduced in an earlier video. Starting from the case dashboard, we'll go up to the menu bar and select the file menu. The first option, Open, presents us with an Explorer dialog where we can navigate to a location on disk to open an existing case within Axiom Examine. Also available from the file menu is the Open Recent option. Selecting that will provide a list of recently opened cases with Axiom Examine. The next option is Refresh Case. As you work with case data in Axiom Examine, you may find yourself rearranging the columns in the Artifact Explorer or the File System Explorer, as shown in an earlier video, or making other settings and configuration changes. Resetting the case view forces Axiom Examine to revert any of the viewing customizations you have set, such as collapsed or expanded information and applied filters, to the state you would see when you first open a case. Our next options in the file menu deal with creating reports, exports, creating portable cases, and merging portable cases. These will be covered in a separate video. If your organization uses Magnet Review, you can configure Axiom Examine to upload evidence directly to a Magnet Review case. If you've not already configured this setting, you can also create an export that is compatible with Magnet Review, which you can upload manually. A link is included in the video description for additional information on configuring this setting and Magnet Review. Finally, the last option of Exit will close Axiom Examine. Next up, we'll take a look at the Tools menu. The top section deals with managing tags, profiles, media categories, date time format display, and export and report settings, followed by a series of selections for post-processing options for some of the explorers which were introduced in an earlier video. The option to upload identifiers to Magnet Prog, a standalone product, is also included here and something we'll talk about a little later in this video. Finally, the last option in the Tools menu opens the Settings window for Axiom Examine. And we'll walk through each of these. Selecting Manage Tags, Tags and Comments help you organize evidence and identify artifacts that are important to your investigation. For example, you might apply the Of Interest tag to artifacts you want to have a closer look at later. You can review all of the tags and comments that are applied to an artifact using the Tags, Profiles, and Media Category pane. Within Manage Tags, we can see a set of system tags included within Axiom Examine, along with options for adding, importing, and exporting tags. Notice for the system tag bookmark, a keyboard shortcut of Spacebar is listed. This means that for any item within one of the explorers of Axiom Examine, to add the bookmark tag, simply press the Spacebar. If you'd like to change this to a different keyboard shortcut, the drop-down menu allows you to choose one of the options shown. As examiners often work similar case types and may find themselves reusing the same type of tags, Axiom Examine offers the ability to create tags within one case and export them for use in other cases using the Export Tags and Import Tags option. If there are certain tags you expect to use during a case, we can go ahead and create them now to use as placeholders. One way is by selecting the Add Tag option at the top of the screen. Simply type the name of the tag we'd like to use and then select the Add button. Another way to do this is by hovering over the last entry where we can see Enter New Tag. Simply clicking there will allow us to enter the name of a new tag. And again, select the Add button. Each of the tags created is automatically assigned the next available keyboard shortcut. These can be changed at any time. We've mentioned the ability to export tags and import tags to another case. Let's give that a try. Simply selecting the Export Tags option will allow me to choose a location to save this file to. That text file is now available for import within the next Axiom case that I work. If we create a tag that we no longer wish to use, hovering over that tag will bring the blue trash can icon into view. Selecting that, we'll delete the previously created tag. Notice here there's a tag labeled hash match. During case creation, 
we loaded a sample list of hash values to search for that were automatically tagged when located during case processing. I can see there are nine artifacts and nine file system tags associated with this particular tag. If I were to attempt to delete this tag because it has items associated with it, Axiom Examine will provide a warning indicating there are 18 items associated with this tag. Finally, let's take a look at import tags, and we'll have to pretend for just a moment this is a different case from the one we just exported the tags from. Notice in the Manage Tags window, I only have the system tags and the tag created for hash match during case processing. If I had those tags created from another case that I would like to bring into this case, I select Import Tags, navigate to the location where that text file is stored, choose Open, and now Axiom Examine brings those tags in and they're ready to go. If I'd like to assign keyboard shortcuts to them, I simply select whichever available from the drop-down menu that I'd like to use. Let's close the Manage Tags window. The next option in the Tools menu is Manage Profiles. Before we talk about managing profiles, let's see where this information comes from. I'm going to close the Manage Profiles window, I'm going to use the Explorer drop-down, switch to the Artifact Explorer view, and take a look in Refined Results, you have Identifiers Device and Identifiers People. For this example, I'll use Identifiers People. When scanning your evidence, Axiom Process attempts to locate items such as email addresses, chat application usernames, document author metadata, names entered for mobile device contacts, and other information consistent with people. While these items will appear as artifact fragments within other places of Axiom Examine, the Identifiers People Artifact category within Refined Results serves as a location for all of the information potentially associated with identifiers for individuals to be aggregated together. We can use this information a few different ways, and one of those is with the idea of building a profile. A profile is a variety of artifacts associated with Identifiers People that are combined together to create a profile for that particular person that can then be used to search across the entire data set. For this example, our Windows 10 computer primary user is named Isaiah Dashner. I'm going to do a quick filter on the identifier column in Identifiers People for that last name. I'll right click, select Filter on Column, and then I'll type Dashner as my search term. With that filter applied, I have 58 results in the Identifiers People column for that last name. The idea behind a profile is to take all of the items you can locate related to a specific individual and combine them together. I'll select all of these. I'll go to the right and I'll expand Tags, Comments, and Profiles and use this to create a new profile. For our profile name, we'll use the last name of Dashner. I'll select OK. And now all of the items I have selected in the Evidence pane have now been added to that same profile. And instead of seeing the solid block of color indicating the items have been tagged, we see the block of color with a human silhouette indicating they are part of a profile. The Identifiers Artifact group is the only place within Axiom Examine that you can create a profile. Now that we have a profile, I'm going to utilize the Manage Profiles link shown here in the Tags, Comments, and Profiles pane to access the Manage Profiles menu that we were looking at just a moment ago via the Tools menu. Now that a profile has been created in this Axiom case, I can go to the Manage Profiles window to make a few changes. For instance, if I'd like to change the name of the profile, I can simply click on it and add the user's first name and select Update. As with an existing tag, we'll get a warning here telling us there are items already associated with this profile. We'll select OK, and now the new name for the profile is displayed. If I choose to delete this profile, the action will be similar to deleting a tag. Hovering over the profile name presents the trash can icon. Now that we've done the work of creating a profile, let's see how we could use one in a case. I'll close the Manage Profiles window by clicking the OK button. As a reminder, these 58 items are now associated with the profile for Isaiah Dashner, and while we could search for these individually across the case, building a profile allows us to search for all 58 of these at one time. Clearing the filters, then collapsing the Tags and Comments pane. I'll then go up and use the Profiles drop-down on the Filters bar, select the profile we've just created for Isaiah Dashner, followed by the OK button. This will cause Axiom Examine to use those 58 items comprising the Isaiah Dashner profile as a filter across all of the artifacts in a case, in this case resulting in 2,137 matching artifacts. We'll again return to the Tools menu and select the next option, which is Manage Media Categories. 
First, if you're using Axiom Cyber, these features are unavailable until following the steps to enable additional features in Axiom Cyber, discussed in the earlier Axiom Process video in this series, but a link is also included for further information in this video description. Once enabled in Axiom Cyber, or if you are using Magnet Axiom, select Manage Media Categories from the Tools menu will open the window shown on my screen. The first step is to select one of the existing media categorization list formats or to create your own. For this example, I'll select United States, Project VIC. Once selecting a list under the heading for Step 1, you'll see the available categories associated with the selected list under Step 2. For the example shown, material designated as Category 1 is marked illegal. With checkboxes available for each of the categories, also note the keyboard shortcuts listed. These make rapidly categorizing multiple items efficient. The last option is a drop-down menu to select the default category assigned to all visible uncategorized pictures. For now, we'll select Category 0, but know that this can be changed at any time. When we put this to use a bit later, you'll see how beneficial this feature is. Also available within the Manage Media Categorization window are links for reminder options, to set up reminders to stop categorizing after a certain time or after categorizing a certain number of media items or at a specific time of day, and media options, items categorized as illegal are blurred or blocked from view completely, as well as the default behavior for audio. The reminder options and media options shown here are the same as those discussed earlier in the Media Explorer view. The next thing we'll do is see how enabling the media categorization list will work when we go to Media Explorer. So first, I'll go to the Filters bar and clear the filter. From there, I'll use the Explorer drop-down and transition to the Media Explorer view. As a reminder with the Media Explorer, our default behavior has media items grouped by evidence source, sorted by size ascending, and all of our hash matches for individual media items are stacked, showing only one hit when there are multiple copies of the same file. On the right side of the screen, I can see the media categories that are listed. Remembering those keyboard shortcuts we looked at earlier, which correspond to the category number, makes this an easy task. Based on our selection in the Manage Media Categories window, all visible uncategorized pictures will be set to Category 0 non-pertinent by pressing the plus key on the keyboard. Reviewing the content shown in the Media Items pane now makes it easy to see these are all Cat 0 images. Pressing the plus key on the keyboard will categorize all of the items shown in the media pane as category 0 and advance the display to the next screen. I can again review the items here, determine they are all category 0 images, and press the plus key again. This allows me to quickly advance through media items. During the categorization of media items, particularly when grouped by evidence source, we may find an instance with multiple items of category 1 material. In times like that, it may be easier to then use the drop-down menu and change the behavior so that all visible uncategorized pictures are tagged as Category 1 when pressing the plus key, or Category 3, as the case may be. All right, just a couple of other items regarding media categorization. Well, let's pretend the items shown on my screen are a mix of various categories, and we'll also assume that the bulk of them are Category 0. Upon reviewing the media items here, if we determine some are Category 1, you can individually select them, press the 1 key on the keyboard to apply that categorization, and that media item will now be blurred. Combining left mouse clicks with the control key will allow us to select multiple items in the display in the event that several of these are Category 2. Notice that with Category 2 images, the media is not blurred because the settings I have enabled, Category 2 is not designated as illegal. The option to blur media or block it from view only apply to any category designated as illegal. Once I have completed the categorization for the media items displayed here and determined that the remaining items are category 0, I can press the plus key and those items are now tagged as category 0. I'll scroll back up so that we can see all of the items shown are now category 0 except for those that I manually selected and designated as category 2 and category 1. Let's go back up to the Tools menu and take a look at the next option, Manage Date Time Format. This is the same menu we've seen in an earlier video, accessed via the Edit link next to the Date Time display on the status bar. From here, we can control the Date Time Format and Time Settings utilized in Axiom Examine. Closing that, 
We'll go back to the Tools menu and take a look at the Manage, Export, and Report settings. Axiom Examine offers a variety of reporting formats and options to fit different needs. The Reporting Templates option lets examiners build templates useful for creating often used reports of specific formats, including controlling which artifacts are included in the report and the columns shown from the Artifact Explorer view within Axiom Examine. The standard report templates included in all installations of Axiom Examine are shown here. Examiners have the ability to create custom templates that can be shared amongst other installations of Axiom Examine or to import templates from another installation of Axiom Examine to this one. Let's close this window, go back to the Tools menu, and you'll see the next series of options to build Timeline, Connections, Email Explorer, Media Explorer, and Picture Comparison. We've looked at each of these explorers in the earlier video module for Axiom Examine. We'll also review the settings options available in Axiom Examine coming up where we can select options to automatically build some of these explorers. One of the features we do need to take a look at is regarding picture comparison. This is another feature in Axiom Examine which uses Magnet AI and leverages content-based image retrieval, or CBIR, to build a database of the still images in your evidence set. You can then search for visually similar images when locating a reference image which exists in your evidence set or by importing a picture which is external to your data set. Magnet AI finds similar pictures based on a picture's general attributes rather than specific details such as small objects or faces. Use Magnet AI to help you find other pictures that are visually similar such as pictures of the same room or pictures with similar scenery. Helping to automate the process of finding similar images, especially working with multiple pieces of digital evidence that could contain hundreds of thousands of images, is a great resource for examiners. To find visually similar pictures, Magnet AI must create a large database. A link is included in the video description with additional information for finding similar pictures and recommendations for optimal system performance. In the example case I have loaded, the picture comparison database has already been built. Well, let's see how this feature works. I'll exit the Tools menu, and we're still using the Media Explorer. I'll select this image, and from the expanded thumbnail view, we can see that this is a generic Windows wallpaper. Right-clicking on the image, I see I have an option to find similar pictures. If I'm looking for visually similar images to the one I've selected, I simply choose Select Picture and wait for the results. Here we can see the results returned using the Locate Similar Images feature. Another option with CBIR is the ability to import a picture from outside of the existing data set. While this could be done in the Media Explorer, for an example, we'll also show that this can be done in the Artifact Explorer from one of the media categories as well. I'll use the Explorer dropdown, switch to Artifacts, I'll now go down and expand Media, select Pictures, and to make things a little easier to see, I'll change to Thumbnail View using large icons from this point, I can go up to the Filters bar, select Similar Pictures, and then the option to Import a Picture. I have one saved on my desktop, just a generic image of a bicycle. We'll import that to our case and utilize CBIR to search for visually similar images. We'll apply that, wait for the results. We can now see visually similar images that have been returned from the images within this data set. Let's return to the Tools menu. You'll see the next to last option is to upload identifiers to Magnet Prog, and it is currently grayed out. Magnet Prog is a standalone product which enables cross case searching for large scale investigations, crime analysis, and intelligence gathering. Cross case sharing of information can be hugely beneficial. Specifically, being able to search cross case for tagged identifiers such as names, emails, screen names, or serial numbers could be a huge benefit. Magnet Prog is a standalone product consisting of a customer controlled cloud server which hosts a database of identifiers from Axiom cases. A link is included in the video description for additional information about this product. Finally, the settings option on the tools menu. Taking a look at the settings window for Axiom Examine, you'll see there are several tabs on the left side of the display with content updating depending on your selection. The preferences tab includes access to many of the default settings in Axiom Examine, which can be configured to better match your workflow, including the default explorer and view. Scrolling down, you can see additional options which affect the behavior of saved files, 
permitting live links in the preview cards of Axiom Examine and Display Theme, which defaults to light mode, but we all know dark mode is better. Here's a view of dark mode in Axiom Examine. The takeaway is Axiom Examine is configurable for your specific needs and preferences. Whether you like dark mode or light mode, and would prefer to use Artifact Explorer as your default explorer versus the case dashboard. All of these can be changed to fit your needs. Okay, I've returned Axiom Examine to light mode. I'll go back up to the Tools menu, select Settings, and we'll move down to the Maps tab. This is where examiners can choose to either use the default option for online maps or configure an offline map server. A link is available within the Axiom Examine interface for additional information and is also included in the video description. Next, we'll move down to the Processing tab. This includes a list of checkboxes under the Post Processing heading to enable automatically building of several of the optional explorers in Axiom Examine that we've already seen, such as Connections and Timeline. In the middle, you'll see an option for Software Rendering Mode. By default, Axiom Examine runs in Hardware Rendering Mode. When Axiom Examine detects a crash, Related to user interface rendering, it will automatically turn on software rendering mode in an effort to avoid a similar crash. Hardware rendering mode uses your computer's graphics processing unit and video drivers to render the Axiom Examine user interface. If your GPU, video drivers, and Windows aren't running on the latest available versions, Axiom Examine can experience crashes. A link is included in the video description for additional information about software rendering mode. Finally, under the Processing tab, we have the Temporary File Location. By default, Axiom Examine stores temporary files in the App Data folder of your Windows user account. However, you can configure Axiom Examine to utilize a different storage location for temporary files to improve case performance. Next, we'll go down and take a look at the Axiom Examine tab within Settings. First is a checkbox for examiners to choose to send telemetry data to Magnet Forensics followed by an option to set the default user interface language, and enable an automatic check for updates to Axiom Examine each time the program is launched. If your forensic workstation is not connected to the internet or you want to manually perform updates, deselecting this feature can be a good idea. The final selection shown on my screen is specific to Axiom Cyber, and it's one we've seen already. To enable additional features in Axiom Cyber focused on media categorization, you'll need to ensure this box is checked and then restart Axiom Examine. The last tab is for product integrations. This enables the use and integration of Magnet Prog and Magnet Review. Both have been mentioned earlier in this video, and as a reminder, there are links in the video description for additional information on each of these. Now, let's close the Settings window and move to the Process menu. Looking at the Process menu in Axiom Examine, you can see there are several choices here related to the processing options of your evidence, and we'll just walk through the list looking at each of these. As we saw with the options available to examiners in the Tools menu, Axiom Examine is configurable to fit your workflow. The first option, Add New Evidence to Case, will launch Axiom Process, but instead of the typical case detail screen for a new case, you'll be presented with the details for the current case you are working with in Axiom Examine. There are a variety of ways an examiner may use this feature, depending on what their investigative goals are. Examples include finding additional data sources within your existing evidence, say a virtual disk image that you would like to export from the image file container and process as a separate evidence item. This can also be useful in an investigation with multiple evidence items, where you may want to start with a subset of those items consisting of those you believe to be most relevant to the case, and then adding others as you progress through the investigation, or adding cloud account data to an existing case after receiving that data either using Axiom Process to acquire that cloud stored data or from something like a search warrant return. The option to add new evidence to a case is available from the Process menu anywhere within Axiom Examine. You can also perform this action using the Add New Evidence button at the top of the Evidence Overview column on the Case Dashboard. The next option from the Process menu is to remove evidence from case. Selecting this option will bring up the dialog window here where examiners can select an evidence item or items to remove from a case. As with adding evidence to a case, there are different times this feature could be useful, say when determining that a specific evidence source which was initially processed has been determined to contain nothing probative to an investigation. 
Examiners may choose to remove it so that only case relevant data remains. Log entries showing this item was removed from the case are still present. In addition to this option being available in the process menu, just as with adding new evidence to case, from the case dashboard evidence overview column, examiners can choose the hamburger menu and be presented with the option to remove that evidence item from the case. Going back to the process menu, we have a grayed out option for reprocessing artifacts with carving. During our earlier videos showing the features of Axiom Process, we looked at the settings to configure the option to parse active data or to both parse and carve for artifacts from our evidence sources. If we had selected to only parse artifacts during initial case processing, we could now choose to go back and carve those same evidence sources for additional artifacts. As with our various post-processing options, such as using Magnet AI for media categorization and building the optional explorers for use in Axiom Examine, the option to perform carving operations as a secondary processing option can present examiners with an opportunity to review evidence more quickly using a reduced set of processing options while still offering the ability to perform later processing in greater depth. Modern digital investigations often consist of multiple evidence sources, including computer, smartphone, and cloud-sourced data. Parsing evidence sources is generally a faster option for recovery of artifacts than carving due to the processing involved. And this option provides examiners a method to quickly gain insight into the content of an evidence set and potentially hone in on actionable data while offering a method for more thorough processing when time may not be as critical. The next option from the process menu is to add keywords to case. This provides a method to perform post-processing of an evidence set with a new keyword list. As with the keyword processing options in Axiom Process, we can select between an artifact-only keyword search or an all-content keyword search. Once that selection has been made, we're then presented with the Add Keywords to Search window, which is similar to what we saw in the Case Details section of Axiom Process. One of the benefits of this option is using a more generic keyword list for a certain case type and then developing a specific keyword list for a particular case after initial review of the artifacts. From this window, examiners can navigate to and import a text-based keyword list or add keywords manually, just as we saw in Axiom Process. I'll close this window, return to the process menu, and we'll take a look at the next option, which is to extract text from files using optical character recognition. This gives examiners the option to choose from PDF documents or pictures and cause Axiom Examine to reprocess these file types using OCR. As a reminder, this option was available during initial case processing, but as with many of the items we're discussing in this video, is a time-consuming operation. Any extracted text recovered using optical character recognition will be displayed in a separate preview card in the details pane of the Artifact Explorer of Axiom Examine. For this example, I'll select the option to extract text from the picture items. When doing this, our radio button is automatically selected to process all pictures in the case. While we could use OCR to extract text from both PDF and picture items across the entire data set, there may be times when we want to focus on a subset of the information contained. As an example, I'll close this window, switch to the Artifact Explorer view, and then apply a filter using the Evidence dropdown on the Filters bar to select only the Google Pixel 3a. With that filter applied, I'll go down and expand the Media category, and then select the Pictures Artifact group. Once the Evidence pane updates to match that selection, We'll just point out we're looking at 2,740 picture items sourced from the Google Pixel 3a within this data set. I could again return to the process menu, select the option to extract text from files via OCR. I'm presented with the same window. Notice this time the option for PDF documents is grayed out because we're only looking at the picture artifact category. Down below, my radio button selections have changed from all pictures in this case to the selected picture only which would be the individual image selected in the evidence pane, or all pictures in the current view, which would perform OCR across the pictures sourced from the Google Pixel 3a. I'll select the button at the lower right to process these artifacts. If you'd like to continue using Axiom Examine while this process runs in the background, that is an option. Once this completes, we'll take a look at the results. Once the OCR processing has completed, we could use the Show Results link on the status bar to review the results. 
one of the filter criteria is now bold and reads extracted text OCR. If we had not used the show results link on the status bar, we could have used the content type filter seen here and selected extracted text OCR to apply the filter with the same end results. This is also a method we could come back to the OCR results at a point in the future. I'll select one of the matching results as an example. In the details pane, I can see the preview card showing the content of the image and scrolling down, I can see the text extracted using OCR card, which displays the content of the text extracted from the image shown in the preview card. I'll clear my filters, return to the process menu, and we'll take a look at the next option, which is categorize pictures and videos by hash value. Selecting this option from the process menu will relaunch Axiom Process and allow examiners to make selections regarding importing hash lists for the categorization of pictures and videos. Notice in the navigation pane of Axiom Process shown on my screen, the only option listed under processing details is that for categorized pictures and videos. While this is offered as a processing option during initial case creation, it is also something that could be done later. This allows post-processing for categorizing pictures and videos by hash value using either JSON files imported from Project Vic or CADE, as well as your own text files containing hashes. As an example, I could choose the option to add a hash list, and I'm then presented with the Add Hash Sets window shown on my screen. Step one is to select a hash list to import. In this case, I'll use a text file named Sample Picture Hashes. Selecting that, we now see step two, where we have to designate a hash set to update. As this is a new hash set, I'll select the option to add a new hash set, and let's just assume this is a list of hashes that we expect to find in this case, and we'll call them notable images. Step three allows us to designate a category regarding media categorization types. And for this example, we'll just assume that the hashes contained within this notable images set are not related to child abuse material. We then choose the option to update the hash set and then close. Back in Axiom Process, we can see that this hash set has been loaded. There are six records. I could then select the Go to Analyze Evidence button in the lower right corner of the display to begin processing for matches to the six hash values included in this text file. Once that search completes, I can close Axiom Process, return to Axiom Examine, and use the Load New Evidence links shown in the status bar to refresh the case and add any new matches from the hash set just loaded in for comparison. We'll again return to the process menu and take a look at the next option, which is to update hash sets with new media categorizations. For examiners tasked with grading of media items, after performing that work, any new categorizations that have been performed within this case could be used to update any existing hash sets within this installation axiom examine and could also be shared with other examiners. The next option, closing that window and returning to the process menu, is Add CPS Export File. This provides a way to load an export file from the Child Rescue Coalition's Child Protection System website to use for search criteria across a case. Finally, we have options to categorize chats and categorize pictures with Magnet AI. While both are offered as options during initial case processing, this may be something examiners choose to do later maybe after identifying the potential for this type of chat content in a case. By default, all chat messages are selected, and I have options to choose optimization for speed or multitasking. As a general rule, if we plan to let this process run and not use the computer for anything else, optimizing for speed will result in this completing faster. If we'd like to continue to use Axiom Examine while this process runs in the background, we have the option to optimize for multitasking. We can also select which of the two Magnet AI chat categories we'd like to use for categorization efforts. Closing this window and returning to the process menu and selecting categorize pictures with Magnet AI will provide us with options similar to what we just saw with categorizing chats. Leaving all pictures selected and choosing next, I have the same search speed selections to choose from, as well as the different Magnet AI image categories that we could search for. As we did with the OCR extraction, another use might be to filter the evidence set. We could use the Explorer dropdown to switch to the Artifact Explorer, then the Evidence dropdown to filter to just the SanDisk USB device in our case. Expand the Media category, select Pictures, and when the Evidence pane updates, we could again return to the Process menu, choose Categorize Pictures with Magnet AI, select Pictures in the current view, and then select the categories we may be interested in.
For this example, I'll select both of the documents categories along with screen captures and vehicles. I'll select categorize pictures and let this process run. Once complete, I could choose the show results link in the status bar at the bottom of the Axiom examine window. As a different approach, we could use the tags and comments drop down on the filters bar and select the three tags that have been applied for possible card ID documents, paper documents, and vehicles matching those magnet AI categories. To make things easier to see, I'll collapse the details pane and switch to thumbnail view. The results shown match the various categories that were selected using the magnet AI categorization. Notice that each of these has the block of color indicating the item has been tagged, and if I hover over that, I can see which tag was applied. In this case, possible vehicles. With Magnet Axiom and Axiom Cyber, the options available within Axiom Examine for things such as building connections, timeline, or picture comparison, along with the options to parse versus parse and carve, adding and removing evidence from a case, or adding keywords to a case provides examiners many choices regarding how they choose to work through an investigation. You may find that you want to create a new case and select all of the processing options you may need and then leave that to run while you continue working on another case or using a different computer. Or you may have a high priority case where time to evidence is critical and you begin working through the investigation using a very targeted approach with Axiom Examine offering the ability to perform post-processing of some of the more time-consuming options when it is more practical. In my case, I'm going to clear the filters and now take a look at the last menu for help. The first option is for documentation. Hovering over that, I have two options, the built-in user guide and artifact reference. Selecting either of these will open the HTML document in your default web browser. Notice the location bar of the browser indicates this is a locally stored file, meaning this document is available even when your forensic computer is not connected to the internet. Returning to the Help menu, Documentation, and selecting the Artifact Reference will again provide us with a locally stored document that can be particularly beneficial when working through a case. The Artifact Reference lists all the applications that, that Magnet Axiom and Axiom Cyber can retrieve data from. Because such a wide variety of artifacts are covered, examiners may not remember all of the options that are out there. The Artifact Reference can be useful to confirm if a specific application is supported for parsing and what data we can expect to find listed in the artifact fragments for that application. Returning to the Help menu, the next option provides access to the Quick Tips window. Quick Tips by default shows when you first launch Axiom Examine and provides a walkthrough of some of the highlights of each version of Axiom. If you're connected to the internet or when installing a new version of Axiom Examine, this will update. You do have the option of disabling the Quick Tips window using this checkbox. Closing that window, and returning to the Help menu, we can see the next option is to collect logs. Choosing this will open an Explorer dialog, which will allow you to select a location to save a zip file created with all of the log files for Axiom Process and Axiom Examine associated with this case. This can be useful if you are experiencing issues and open a request with Magnet Forensics support. Returning to the Help menu, the About Axiom option will open a window showing the specific version of Axiom that you have installed, which is followed by an option in the Help menu to check for updates. If your examination computer is connected to the internet, this will perform a check to see if a newer version of Magnet Axiom or Axiom Cyber are available for download. The update check will also include a list of features available with a newer version. Finally, the licensing option from the help menu includes the same options that we saw for both Magnet Axiom and Axiom Cyber that were covered in an earlier video. That brings us to the end of the Module 2 Part 2 video on the Axiom Examine user interface and menu options. In our next video, we're going to start using Axiom Examine for analysis and look at some of the advanced filtering, searching, and tagging options available to us.